This weekend post, the balancing act between a sunburst glow and maintaining clarity. Hey everybody, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to InPost. Thanks for joining me today. So I was looking at uh, some of the, the photos I've been taking recently and I, I seem to be on this kick of working starbursts or flares or so forth into my photos. I shoot into the sun you know, relatively often. Uh, I guess more recently I've been trying to either filter the sun through something or put it just out of the frame. And what that ends up doing is it creates a nice uh, you know, ambiance to the photo. But it can be challenging sometimes to balance the, the soft glow of that starburst effect from the sun and maintaining clarity on certain subjects I want to be sharp. And this one photo that uh, came from the, uh, the shootout at the Sea Caves in La Jolla, I showed you that earlier this week, it kind of exemplified that. And I'll show you the, the, the bit of technique that I did to, uh, to kind of balance the two. So I'm just going to hit the backslash key here in Lightroom. This is what came out of the camera. So, you know, certainly it was... A little bit dull. There's a fair amount of atmosphere there. You know, the, the water's throwing up some spray and the sun's, of course, going to be washing some things out. And overall, I was able to bring a lot of that warmth back. And that was pretty much your, your, your basic stuff, you know, and standard daylight things and just playing around with these settings. This auto button in Lightroom, honestly, this thing's gotten really, really good with that Sensei technology that, that Adobe's added in. And so it's a great starting point. You know, it certainly did some work on clarity and so forth. But even as healthy as this clarity is, this background caves and everything with this strong light coming in, this was all still washed out. And so I turned to a radio filter. And I have one radio filter right here. And I'm going to hover over that. And so it's applying things to you know the, the rocks and the surrounding foreground because I didn't want to add any clarity to the water. I want the water to kind of stay soft. But notice the settings here added more contrast, lots more clarity, and a bit of that dehaze in there. And so I'm going to turn off just the radio filter. So without the radio filter, see it's still kind of flat, kind of washed out, not looking so great. And then after, got that contrast pop, even add a little bit more warmth. I overlooked that when I was going through the sliders. So the, the rocks are getting warmer. I'm not warming up the water, keeping that at more of a bluish, cooler tone. And as I look at this, I might even do a second round of this, uh, taking that same setting, but then applying a range mask. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll kind of turn this into a little bit of a, a live edit. I'm going to take this same point. I'm going to duplicate it. So it's going to put it right in the same spot. And this time I will now go into the range mask. I'll go by luminance and we'll tighten it off the shadows, tighten it off the highlights. And just so we can see what's going on. Let's zero out all those extra sliders there because we just want to pop clarity, probably contrast. And so I'm going to push it really far right now so we can see what's going on. And then we'll dial in, you know, just for kind of in the mid-tone regions, something like that. And if I hover over that point, we should see a bit of the difference there, right? So we're not getting those deep shadows in the cave. We're maintaining it on the the highlights there. Let's just turn on our selected overlay for that. And we'll, we'll we'll dial that in so it looks pretty good. We'll keep it off the off the highlights out in the sunburst and then maybe add a little bit more of that dehaze. We'll turn that off. And let's see that double pop. What does that do for us before and after? A bit stronger. Maybe we'll add in just a touch more warmth on that second one there. So leveraging uh, you know, a bunch of different tools here, but you know the key one being the dehaze and the clarity, but shaping it so that you're not going to affect areas that need to remain soft. And so working globally gets you so far, and then starting to work locally is even better. It's, it's balancing that warm, soft glow of some very high directional light with contrast and clarity of things that need to be a little crisper in the scene. And I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, let me know somehow. Contact me through my website, comments on the video below. Social shares are always appreciated. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport, and happy shooting.